Well, what we got here, folks, is Grandpa's Swayback Sharpening Stone. So, I actually I found this at a uh, an antique shop for a couple of bucks, and I thought it would actually make a pretty good little video uh, uh, restoring this thing, bringing it back uh, into kind of usable condition. It's pretty it's pretty rough right now, and uh, we'll. Uh, Put a straight edge on it and you guys can get an idea of how jacked up it is there. So hopefully you can see that. Huh. Maybe if you held it still we could see it. It's it's both directions. It's got a I don't know what grandpa was sharpening in here, but uh, they he wallered out a uh, a big hole in the middle there. So what we're gonna do is bring this back and um uh, Reflatten it. Um, we'll we'll reflatten uh, both sides. Yeah, this thing looks pretty sad, actually. So let's see what we can do with this thing and uh, uh, bring it back and uh, and maybe get some use out of it. I showed this in a previous video. This is actually a uh, Norton flattening stone, and it's a uh, um, it's actually for flattening water stones uh, for uh, for woodchucks and but it works pretty good on this kind of stuff too and it's silicon carbide and it's it's molded and um, it kind of wears away uh, at a slower rate than the than the uh, actual abrasive stone uh, and then you can go back and uh, using some silicon carbide paper and go on the surface plate and then kind of retrue this too um, but uh, Yep, look at that, you can already see that one, one little scrub there, right? Okay, so let's see. Give it a little, okay? And you can see it's hitting on the high points there. So it's a lot of elbow grease, but uh, I think it's going to be worth it. This is going to be a, kind of a nice stone, I think, uh, when we're done with it. So uh, let's uh, get here where you guys can see this. Let's see, Let me double check the frame there. Yeah, it looks pretty good. You see I'm, I'm coming all the way off all the edges too. That keeps you from cutting a hollow into that thing too. Although this thing does deteriorate as well. So, see it's getting better. It's pretty actually shocking how fast this thing works. I wonder how many years it took him to to wear that to wear that hole in the middle. After a suitable application of elbow grease, we've got uh, Grandpa's swayback uh, bench stone in pretty good shape here. It's uh, relatively flat across the back, or both sides, both the working surfaces. I went ahead and touched the, uh, the sides too, just to, to clean them off. That's kind of what it looked like before. Um, so, but, like a, a dope, I really wasn't paying that much attention to um, how much stuff was coming off here. And it turns out a lot of it is um, this silicon carbide uh, flattener here really took uh, a pretty good hit uh, to do that. So I was, you know, okay, what's better than, uh, better than that? Well, diamond certainly is. So I fished around on... Amazon and they came up with this thing here and this is actually a, the diamond equivalent of this It's for flattening uh, water stones or stones in general um, And I was surprised to find that uh, this was $24 So there's a link in the description uh, if you want to check one of these out um, So this is great for um, Excuse me I'm getting ready to have a bozo burp um, um, Who's the bozo here? You're the Nimrod that just wore out your bench stone. Mm, excuse me. 
Um, anyway, this made short work of the final bit of, uh, of this here. So, uh, you know, for how cheap this was, this thing really works good. And I, I haven't tried it, but you can pop, you can use this wet or dry, and then you can pop it loose to, uh, to clean these and uh, carefully and dry them out. So, uh, um, anyway, so let's, uh, let's clean this mess up and then we're going to go back over to the, uh, the bench and uh, do the rest of the, uh, the work to get this in shape. So this is the, uh, the wood tray that this came with and uh, I don't know, I'm not real excited about it. Um, <laughs> this, is, this is typical of this kind of project, it always turns into a little bit more than what you intended initially, but that's okay, that's part of the fun. Um, this has got a pretty bad crack in it here, and uh, this is a little sketchy too, so I think we're going to get rid of that. Um, I got a piece, it's going to blow out the camera here because it's white. I got a piece of uh, starboard here, uh, three quarter inch thick, and uh, I think what we're going to do is make a new tray for this thing. Let's see, I'll pick the best edges here, it looks pretty good. And you know, we're just going to try to keep this simple, Simon, here. We're not going to go uh, full uh, nutcase uh, machinist on this, okay? So. Yeah, this is just to bandsaw it out, and I'll clean up those edges. So let's, uh, let's chop that out, and then we'll, uh, we'll mill a cavity in that, and then uh, cross our fingers that, uh, that uh, Mr. Bozo will be satisfied that we're done. Watch it there, bucko, or I'll just knock a couple of teeth off this bandsaw blade for you. This stuff is uh, its actually really nice to work with. I kind of like it for just general purpose kind of plastic jobs. It's, it's cheap, um, it's readily available, and it comes in a, just a couple of colors, not a lot of colors, but uh, um, it holds up well the chemical stuff. It uh, is stable when you cut away a lot of material and uh, generally is uh, pretty good. So let's do that first. See that long edge. So we got a, it's cleaned up now. So now I'm gonna uh, give it a little, little more depth of cut, and then uh, feed a little slower to get a nice finish. cut to finish. Voila. Yeah, you can almost deburr this stuff with your with your finger. 
Okay, now that other edge is looking a little... <laughs> See, this? <laughs> this is exactly what happens, right? <laughs> you look at the other edge and you go, oh, yeah, that's, not as, that's not as nice as the one I just did. Right? So that can't be. Can't leave that unanswered. It's a terrible disease, I'm telling you. Let's at least try to not be. This is officially what's called cheating, right? I-16, huh, okay, kind of worked out. So, then we're gonna use our Mr. Sharpie here, and we're going to just go to the inside of the line when we're doing our eyeball milling, which you will see in just a minute here, okay? Let that dry just a whisk it. All right, see you back at the mill. Make sure that's in there. All right, so how deep? So that's what? Seven sixteenths deep. This stuff's a little thinner. So let's uh, let's go half of the thickness. I'm just going to touch here. Zero my quill DRO. Uh, and then we're going to go in about half the thickness with our eyeball mill. So I'm just ramping it in here. All right, there's 200 Dow. And then I'm just gonna get this material out of my way, or a lot of it anyway. Uh-oh. <laughs> Thanks, Mr. Bozo. <laughs> oh, okay, you know what? Bam! Take that, cheese whiz. Should have taken that. Uh, see, my marks, <laughs> my marks gone now. <laughs> see, nothing's easy, right? Nothing's easy. I'm telling you. All right. Um, well, I guess I'm going to remark that. <laughs> All right. uh, you know, you got to laugh at yourself, right? That was kind of a bonehead move. All right. Well, we're not to full depth, so I'm just going to go down there. Call that good. Make sure I'm tight. Okay. All right. Rinse and repeat. Close. I'll switch to a smaller end mill to get the corners out. Just want to get most of it out of my way here before I get, uh, get too carried away. All right, and now we'll uh, go for some more depth here. 300, 350. Uh, you know what? I'm just gonna go all the way here. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, I'm trying not to be Mr.
we're gonna eighth inch in mill in here now. Speed it up a little bit. And myself a little bit of some of that. Yeah, you can almost deburr it with your fingernail. You know, and I, I hit the corners of this with the diamond a little bit, but uh, there we go. That's pretty good. All right. Uh oh. Okay. All right. A little bit of deburring, and then uh, I think I'm going to run the corner around her. See, here it goes. Right. <laughs> we keep adding. I'm going to run the corner around her around these this upper edge only and these corners here, and then uh, then I'm going to get off the horse. I promise. I changed my mind. I decided to go to a, um, a just a 45 degree chamfer. This is a router bit that has a little pilot bearing on it. And um, um, the reason I decided to switch was, you know, a corner rounder is, you know, a radius is, is nice looking, right? But the motif of this, I mean, if there is a motif, right? is you know it's a sharpening stone that has square corners and square edges and things like that so i'm just kind of going with the flow a little bit and uh just using a chamfer instead and the other reason is i couldn't find the <laughs> the radius bit that i wanted so what we're going to do we're just going to come down and just get below that surface a little bit fire this up a little faster and then i'm just going to go until that bearing stops right there Okay, and I'll zero that. And then I'm just gonna gently creep down until I get a, a cut going. All right. And just keep sneaking up on it. Until I get a chamfer that I, that I like the look of. Which, yeah, a little more than that, I think. And what do you think? A little bigger? What's Mr. Bozo say? Huh. I would have went for the radius myself. Oh, he wants the corner round. <laughs> okay. Um, hey, you know what? I'm just going to go for uh, subdued, I guess, in this case. All right, so now, since we, got a, we had a stop set, all we have to do is just kind of uh, uh, turn things over. And, uh, and rinse and repeat. Oops, no, that's not gonna work there. All right. Well, can't go against my stop. <laughs> um, well, there's the chamfer. <laughs> Got one side. I can do two sides. <laughs> All right, let me figure out how I'm gonna do that. My, don't worry. I'm. Not stupid, I'm panicking. <laughs> All right. oh, okay, so well, you know what? Maybe that maybe that's okay. Maybe that's okay. How about this? You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna go for it here. That's, uh, that's yeah, that's sitting against there. Oh yeah, this will be fine. Two, three, four. And then we'll do the, the long edges in a sec. So 
I'm just visually matching the width of those chamfers. I'm just bringing the knee up a little bit at a time. That looks pretty good. a reference edge so we're just gonna <clears throat> put this in there this way now my vice will open wide enough probably not <laughs> yeah there it goes that was close <laughs> all right all right and then so all our references are the same very gingerly come across like this there she goes. Okay, and since I got the jaw that or the vise cranked way open, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, do that side while I'm there. Well, I'm not really holding it with my hand. I'm just trying to sense any potential movement that I don't want, right? Your hand can pick it up sometimes, or many times, most of the time, quicker than uh, your eye can react to it. Your hand is, uh, yeah, it looks pretty, oh, that's got a nice little, little kind of uh, tricorn point there, so, uh, okay. This is a, just a little ceramic scraper to, that works good on um, soft plastics like this. Now the other thing that works good on this kind of stuff. I'm going to get some here in a sec. We'll go over it the last bit. Is um, steel wool. So, all right, let's get that sharpie off of there. Oops. This is just uh, denatured alcohol to uh, get the Mr. Sharpie off of there. I couldn't find any steel wool. I had a, a wad of uh, this bronze wool. it and we're nice and flat I might break these edges just a little more with the diamond uh, diamond hone or I might not so this is gonna go down to the bash and uh, I don't know get traded for something else cool thanks for watching guys